Well, I will be the first to admit that I am late to the bone broth bandwagon. And now I'm thinking, what the heck took me so long? So today on the Spicy Apron Cooking Show, I am going to show you how to make Instant Pot Chicken Bone Broth. And you will be shocked at how easy it is. It's everywhere. You read about it, you see it, it's on the shelves, it's on your internet, it's everywhere you look. But there's a reason for that. It is super healthy. And the good news is now it's super easy to make. Thanks to the Instant Pot, I am going to be making the chicken bone broth today in the six quart Instant Pot. Certainly it'll work for the eight quart. You can also do it in your three quart. Just make sure you don't fill it too much. Now the easiest way to make homemade bone broth is to simply use bones that you already have from a chicken or chicken parts that you have already eaten. So today what I am doing is I am using the leftover juices that accumulated from a whole rotisserie, I say rotisserie, instant pot rotisserie chicken that I made yesterday for dinner. So I shredded up the chicken, used all the chicken, and then I saved all of the chicken bones in order to make this bone broth today. Now, what I did is I didn't want to clean the pan and get it dirty again. So all I did is yesterday when I took my chicken out, I simply put the inner pot in the refrigerator covered. And then today I brought it out. I put it on keep warm just to kind of warm it all up. And here we are. So next time you have chicken bones and it could be from chicken thighs that you ate or a whole chicken like I did or even chicken wings, keep the bones, throw it in a Ziploc bag and put them in a freezer or in your refrigerator so then you can make homemade bone broth. So that is what we are starting with today. If you look in here, it's just the leftover accumulated juices that I had from my whole chicken. Now I've got the chicken bones that were from the chicken that I did last night. All you wanna do is literally dump them in without hopefully making too big of a mess. And then most of us always have some sort of veggie scraps laying around, like some onion pieces, some celery. I've got a couple of limes here that were about to go bad. So I'm just gonna throw all of that in right on top of the chicken. Now, if you'll see, I just dumped everything in here. I am gonna add liquid, obviously, to make the broth. But first, I am going to add some salt. Now, you can add salt or not add salt. It's completely up to you. But just remember, if you don't add the salt now, then your broth will not have that salty flavor that we are all used to when we buy store made broth. So I do always add salt. I did have a viewer call me out on salt telling me how unhealthy it is. I would like to point out to everybody, I do have low blood pressure and I exercise all the time. So for me, salt is good, but I trust that you all will make your own decision regarding salt. Now that you've got everything in your pot, all you're gonna do is add water. Now you want to add just enough water to cover everything and it should come to just below the max two thirds line that is on your Instant Pot inner pot. Please do not fill it more than that. It either won't come to pressure or it will be a huge mess when you are done. So I added just enough to cover everything. It is just below my two thirds max line and I am going to pressure cook it. So put your lid on sure you turn your valve to sealing. And then I am going to press the soup slash broth button. Now I have my soup and broth button programmed to go for two hours because I always use it for this purpose of making broth. You do want to cook it for at least two hours. You certainly could do it longer if you want to just continue to draw all those nutrients out of the bones that are in the broth inside your pot. Now, if you don't know how to program all of your buttons the way you want them, yes, you can modify them from the way they are sent to you from the factory. I actually have a brand new Instant Pot course. It is called Be the Boss of Your Instant Pot. I will put a link to that below, and it is a full 30 video course that teaches you all you need to know about your Instant Pot from the very beginning all the way through some advanced recipes. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra help and guidance with your Instant Pot, you might wanna check that out. So this is gonna cook for two hours, and then we're gonna strain it and bottle it up. Okay. Wow, if you could smell this right now, 
you will understand why people now make foam broth in their own homes using their Instant Pot. I took it out of the Instant Pot. It's still obviously in the inner pot just so it could cool off a little bit so I can work with it to show you the remaining steps. But I just wanted to show you guys this. I mean, obviously all these veggies and thing we tossed in, but man, look at how rich this broth is. Oh my God, it's just, it's fabulous. It's amazing. And the smell, unbelievable. So. The next step is I am going to strain it. So let me move this. So I have a large bowl here and then just a regular colander here. Now I'm gonna strain it twice. So the first time is to get all the big stuff out. Then I'm gonna do it again using either cheesecloth or even paper towels and strain it twice. So the first time we're just gonna dump it in, get all the big stuff off. Then we're gonna do it again. All right, here we go. It's kind of messy. Okay, so you'll notice that when I poured everything in, obviously I have the trivet still in here. Now, remember at the very beginning, I told you that I used the pot that I had used to make my rotisserie chicken, rotisserie chicken. And by the way, I have a video on how to do that here. So go ahead and click that link if you're interested on just making the whole chicken first. And I just left the trivet in there. It's totally fine. You leave it in. If you wanna take it out before you do the broth, you can do that too. But obviously it didn't get in my way. Okay, so now I just need to lift this up a little, let that gorgeous broth strain through. I'm gonna to toss this in the trash and then we'll come back for round two. Now, as you can see, all of the big stuff has been strained out of our broth and now we're gonna do it one more time just to get any small bits that might've been missed the first time. You can certainly do it with cheesecloth or a paper towel the first time, but I have found it works better to do two steps like I'm doing for you. Okay, so here is our broth and here is what we are going to strain it into. My colander that I have lined with two layers of paper towels and a clean bowl, put it right in and we're just gonna slowly pour it in. Look at all of that wonderful, yummy, Oops, I'm kind of making a mess. Foam broth, homemade. Okay, now just very gently lift the colander up so the rest of it strains out. And you guys, look at this rich, beautiful color. It's amazing, it smells wonderful. I am going to get a couple of jars and containers that I'm gonna pour it into to show you how to store it in your fridge. Okay, now you can store it in your fridge for seven to 10 days in any container you want. I like to put them in glass jars. Uh, I have these mason jars here. It works really well if you have a funnel that you can put on top and just pour it in. I do not have my funnel here. I have no idea where it went. So I'm gonna use a measuring cup and just dip it right in and fill my mason jar. That is just beautiful. Now I like using these mason jars because they are 16 ounce jars. So I know exactly how much is here when I need it for a recipe. But guys, seriously, look at how gorgeous that is. Do you not want to just drink that? And by the way, a lot of people do drink it straight like this. It is amazingly healthy for you. And it has all kinds of healing properties and it heals your gut if you have gut issues. And of course, if you have a cold or the flu, I don't really know that it can cure it, but it can certainly make you feel a heck of a lot better. So now you all know how to make homemade Instant Pot chicken bone broth. I hope you give it a shot because you will be hooked the way I am. Now that I have it all poured into my storage containers, and by the way, is this not the cutest container? I love this. I do wanna just point out one thing about storage. So if you'll read on the internet, some people, when it's done cooking and done being strained, they let it sit and then skim the fat off of the top before they store it in the refrigerator. I don't do it that way. I go ahead and store it just like I showed you, strain it, pour it in and store it. It will form a fat cap on the top once it's cold, but that actually protects it from outside bacteria getting into it. So it's a protective layer. So what I do then is I just simply peel that fat cap off, use as much broth as I want, and then the fat cap goes right back on top. I learned that cute little trick from simplyrecipes.com, one of my very favorite blogs. I've been following that one for years. So store it in whatever containers you choose. 
but I do recommend leaving that fat cap on there. If you are looking for other Instant Pot recipes or other homemade quick and easy comfort food recipes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and then you'll get a notification next time I have a video come out. Happy cooking and happy eating.